for somebody here i believe that this particular fast is the one that will finally change your life and i don't want you to approach it like you have approached other fast in time past this will finally change your life i'm speaking quickly on the subject right let's look at isaiah chapter 58 and in verse 6 all the way to verse 8 is not this the fast that i have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness to undo heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free and that you broke you break every yoke is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine hell shall spring forth speedily. Thy righteousness shall go before thee. And the glory of the Lord shall be thy rear word. The Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking very, very quickly on the subject. The profitability of fasting. The profitability of fasting we want to understand first how profitable fasting is and then to understand how to profit from the fast It's important to note that fasting is a spiritual tool with proven profitability. A spiritual tool, weapon, whose profitability has been tested and proven. That was the secret, the key in the life of Moses in Exodus chapter 24 verse 18 we saw how Moses remained in the midst of the cloud in the presence of the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights Exodus 34 28 we saw Moses again he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights he neither eat bread nor drink water it was the secret of Moses. It was the secret of Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 8, we saw how Elijah, Bible said he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mountain of God. It was the secret of Elijah. Fasting was the secret of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 2, all the way to verse 3. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself or rub myself, even cream at all, till these three weeks, 21 days were fulfilled. It was the secret of Daniel. It was the secret of Queen Esther. In the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 16, Esther said, I am going to get, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Fast for me. That was the secret of Esther. That was the secret of our master Jesus. 
In Matthew chapter 4 verse 1, we saw the example of his fast. Then Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, verse 2. And when he had fast, fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. That was the secret of the master. That was the secret of the disciples. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, all the way to verse 17, Jesus said, Moreover, when you fast, not if you fast, when. He was talking to the disciples, be not as the hypocrites of a sad, sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may be, appear unto men to fast. Now, so when you fast, so fasting is not a matter of if. It was for the apostles a matter of when. Verse 17, he repeated that, when thou, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint your head, wash your face. Don't be looking like, oh, I'm just about to die because I'm fasting. Just ensure that you are in order. But the matter is, you will fast. Many of us know that before the day of Pentecost happened, there was some level of fasting. Because they were in the upper room from the Passover to the Pentecost. That was a 10-day period. And within that period, there was no Nobody said who was cooking for them or taking food there. The apostles fasted. The preeminent apostle by the name Paul the apostle was a chronic faster. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 5. I am telling you about fasting and those who fasted in time past. Paul said in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings. In fastings, he was given the credential of his ministry, and part of it was fastings. In Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-seven, Paul again speaking, talk about in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings, often in hunger, in thirst, in fastings, often in cold and nakedness. Something is about to change for somebody. If you believe that, say louder, amen. amen. Lift your right and say, fasting is my secret too. It's a major key in my life too. Very, very quickly, what do we look out for in a fast? What do you look out for? What do you expect? Number one, drastic divine encounters. Drastic divine encounters. Daniel chapter 2, uh, so sorry, chapter 10, verse 2 to 7. Daniel was fasting. He said, In those days, I, Daniel, I was mourning three full weeks. We read it already. Ate no pleasant bread, and then jump to verse 4 now. And then, and in the four and twentieth day of the first month, I was by the side of the great river, which is Hidekel. The fast was on. I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. He was now describing the, an encounter in the cause of the fast. You can read all the way to verse 7. He was describing an encounter in the middle of the fast. We already read about Moses in Exodus chapter 24 verse 18 and chapter 25 verse 1. Exodus 24 18, Exodus 25 verse 1. Also Exodus 34 verse 28. Where Moses had encounters with the Almighty, with Jehovah himself. And he was able to write, the, 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 um, to receive the tables of the Ten Commandments. So, and that happened in the course of his fast. So in the course of the fast, expect encounters from the Almighty that are drastic. Life-changing, destiny-shifting encounters. Number two is striking light and insight. Striking light and insight from scripture. Because if you don't know what to expect, you won't have anything to experience. Striking light and, uh, and insight from scripture. He said when you fast in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6 and 8, then shall your light break forth. Light break forth. Light break forth. 
Paul the apostle without doubt was the most lighted apostle. Without any doubt. And he told us more about his fasting than anybody else. Light. Striking light. And of course you know that when light comes. People rise. Arise shine. For your light is come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. Striking light and insight. Number three is forceful deliverance and freedom. Fasting brings deliverance. It brings freedom. Breaking of yokes and chains. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Isaiah 58 verse 6 to lose. To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. A season of fast when it is done well have the capacity to scatter yokes. Capacity to break addictions. Capacity to break chains. Forceful deliverances and freedom. Number four is renewed what do we expect, what do we look out for in the fast. Number four, renewed physical health, strength, and energy. Renewed physical health, strength, and energy. He say your health shall spring forth. In Isaiah chapter 58 and in verse 8, your health shall spring forth. In Isaiah 58 and in verse 8, then he said, they that wait on the Lord, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Hi, 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 hi. Physical energy Physical strength, physical health is possible in the course of the fast. Somebody say a loud amen. That is, that, is, that is practically renewed in energy, renewed in strength, renewed in youthfulness. Renewed. That was number four. Number five is rekindled spiritual passion and intimacy with God. The fast will renew, will rekindle your spiritual passion and your intimacy with God. In Psalm 63 verse 1 to 2, he said, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul fasted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Soul thirsty. Flesh longing to see your power. To encounter your presence. As I've seen in the sanctuary. Acts chapter 2, of course, verse 1 to 2. The Holy Ghost came while they were still waiting in the upper room. That is intimacy. That is fire. There came the sound of the rushing mighty wind. Cloving tongues like a of fire sat on their head. That is passion. Rekindled spiritual passion. And rekindled an, in, an intimacy with God. Number six is renewed spiritual power and authority. Renewed spiritual power and authority. In the course of the fast, you are enabled to pass over to higher dimensions of spiritual power. What ordinary praying couldn't do, the fast added to the prayer can force it out. That was what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, when he was talking about some kind of demons that goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and by fasting. And he said, my soul longed for you my flesh my soul fasted my flesh longed that is describing and they say in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water that's describing a fasting situation to see thy power you see to see thy power in the course of the fast you are capable of generating enough power to deal with the things that must be dealt with enough power to deal with the things that must be dealt with Renewed spiritual power and authority. And number seven is released 
divine guidance and direction. Release divine guidance and direction. Where strategic direction is released, revelations, visions become easy in the course of the fast. You are able to be, be, you, you become more spiritually sensitive. Your, your sensitivity and your perception or your perceptivity is amplified in the course of the fast. In Acts chapter 13 and in verse 1 to 2, the Bible said, there was in the church that were, was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers like Barnabas, like Simeon that was called Niger, like Lucius of Cyrene, like Manain, which has been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, somebody will hear something this month. That amen is not a good one. That area of life where you are looking for direction, in the course of this fast, that direction will come your way. Somebody will connect spiritual power like you have never seen before and spiritual authority like you have never seen before. Somebody is stepping into a realm of passion for God and a realm of intimacy with God like you have never experienced before. Somebody's physical health is coming back. Strength is coming back. Energy is coming back. Every disease in your body, every affliction in your life, everything my Father in heaven has not planted in your system is uprooted in the course of this fast. In the name of Jesus, every area of our addiction and bondage, every chain. The enemy has chained your head or neck or hands or feet. In this season, the chain is breaking. I prophesy unusual light, unusual insight, unusual revelation in the course of this fast. As you open the Bible, something will jump out of the Bible, hitting your spirit. And of course, I declare divine encounters starting from the prayer sessions in the course of your sleep at night it shall happen you believe that shall the lord say amen tell somebody by your side tell them this fast is your fast tell them this is the fast that will change your life give the lord a praise take your seat just one more minute how do you profit from a fast? Because it is possible to do a hunger strike and call it a fast. Already, what we are doing now is part of profiting from the fast. Number one, step in with revelation. You step in with revelation. You are not just trying to do something. Jesus was led into a fast. What is revealed to you determines what can be possessed by you. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. I am not just fasting for religious purposes. I am fasting because I know in the course of the fast, I can have an encounter. In the course of the fast, light will come. In the course of the fast, chains will break. You step in with revelation. Second, exist in desperation. Desperate. The violent take it by force. From the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom suffer violence. The violent take it by force. Matthew eleven twelve, 12, Jeremiah 29, 13. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Desperation means something must happen. Something must happen. Something must happen. That's desperation. Something must happen. The 21st day of this fast is not permitted to come until something changed. In my life, in your life, that is desperation. Something must happen. Thirdly, exist in expectancy. Expectancy. 
exist in expectancy. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 17, 18. Let not your heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. The Bible says concerning the cripple and the beautiful girl, he was expecting to receive something. What is the difference between desperation and expectancy? Desperation says something must happen. Expectancy says something has happened. And I'm looking for it. <laughs> something has happened. Where is it? Am I communicating? So, you put out your expectometer. In the day, in the night, you sleep with expectation, wake with revelation. Number three was what? Exist in expectancy. And number four, exist in the inquiry mode. Inquiry mode. That's right. Stand in the ways and ask. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Which is the way? Inquiry mode means Lord is there something you are saying that I need to hear? Let me know. Is there something you want to show that you want me to see? I sleep with expectation. Am I communicating? You have finished praying. You are listening for answers. You open the scripture. You have read it. Lord, what is this passage saying to me? When the student proves that he is a student, the teacher will prove that he is a teacher. The choir mode. God likes to be asked because it confirms our dependence. And confirms his omniscience. These, three, these four things. You step in by revelation. Remind yourself daily as we fast. The things, those seven things mentioned. That you expect to see in the fast. Then step in. With desperation. With expectancy. And with in inquiry. I ask a lot of questions. People think that uh, insight just comes because you just looked. N not necessarily. It can come just by itself. But you ask a lot of questions. And you will get a lot of answers. One thing I am convinced about is that someone here today, this is the first thing you have been waiting for. Do you sense in your spirit that something is already happening? Stand on your feet with a louder shout of amen. With the loudest shout of amen. With amen at the top of your voice. We we're meant to be on the communion tonight, but for one reason or the other, I forgot to announce it yesterday. But tomorrow, we'll break the bread in the evening. And trust God for the communion to communicate the things that we came to fast for. But now, lift up your hands everywhere you are. Psalm 103 verse 1, 1 to 5 said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Redeems your life from destruction, crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalm 105 verse 1 to 2. Psalm 105 verse 1 to 2. Say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous 